There are things in this world that science cannot explain. Things that conjure malevolence, where kindness used to live. There are entities beyond comprehension that lurk just beyond our sight. They twist in the shadows, festering in the darkest parts of a mind. There are relics left behind from time to time. Evidence that something is coming. These items are collected and stored in a secret location. Terror lines the halls in the, the Scarab, Scarab Archives. Archives. This cannot be an appropriate use of the Foundation's resources. This is your job. Look, I haven't eaten all day. This is the only piece we have left to cover. After that, you can get back to those silly horoscopes of yours. And you'll get back to staring at the same page in that book for 20 minutes. Have you considered an optometrist appointment, Dr. East? There's actually a really nice doctor in the plaza by the teeny office. Dr. Brandy seems very available. The plaza by the teeny office? What kind of direction is that? <laughs> Miss Thalo, the very small amount of time that I have to eat is dwindling. Do you need further instruction? Dr. Stewart seriously wants to prioritize this? I saw a ring on the inventory update, and I think Dr. Stewart would prefer that I... No, I'll be covering the ring myself tomorrow. Something's come up in regards to another piece, and I need to examine those notes thoroughly. Now, you do know how to use this recorder, don't you? Of course, Dr. East. Buttons. No, I've already hit the button. Just talk into the microphone. It's older, so you have to speak a bit more clearly. Just hit the stop button to turn it off, right? No, just leave it running. I'll be back in a few minutes. You'll be done by then. Anything else, Dr. East? Don't play it. Come again? Just... Just... Please. Don't play it. Trust me. I'll be back shortly. He doesn't know that I yoinked a lock from the supply closet and I put it on the office door. It's a little rusted but it could be good enough to get me through a recording without East the Omnipotent busting in and ruining everything. A little privacy feels nice, you know? Case file H084. Designation, the ukulele. That's right. The great and powerful Scarab Archives have nabbed themselves a ukulele. Unbelievable. The ukulele is roughly 23 inches in length, which is remarkably unremarkable for the standard size of this sort of instrument. The coloring is a deep red with lively speckles of carnelian. Even in the dim light of this workroom, they almost look like smoldering embers left over when a fire is dying out. Honestly, it's the most beautiful instrument I've ever seen. A ukulele. The structure is wooden, which is notable given that most instruments of this kind are mass-produced in plastic and sold at a Walmart. This ukulele isn't something to bring to your nephew at a birthday party. It's a really stunning item. Reportedly, the ukulele seems to always be perfectly in tune, requiring very little adjustment before playing. It's the definition of pickup and play. And it looks like you can play it. There are potentially hundreds of thousands of chords, melodies, and progressions that can work together to make a song. But apparently, there is one song that spells disaster for anyone who plucks the tune. Seriously, it's the first song anyone ever plays on one of these things. This is ridiculous. Dr. East must be pranking me. This is because they took his computer away, isn't it? Dr. Doom and Gloom is just taking it out on me. I bet 
this isn't even really a relic. He probably picked it up at a gas station on the way in today. He's probably going to come back in here in a few minutes and mock me from his ivory tower because I'm even trying to take this seriously. Ugh. Use logic, Isabella. If it was a prank, he wouldn't have had enough time to compile enough notes for it to look like a real file. Let's see. Well... There is something here. The ukulele's history can be dated back to 1968, when, inspired by a televised performance by popular singer Tiny Tim, high school music teacher Roderick Jacobs of Dover Hills, Colorado, purchased a ukulele from a traveling salesman at a state fair. The instrument soon became the focal point of Jacobs' classes, even though records indicate that he was often more enthusiastic about the instrument than his students were. Isn't that every high school music teacher? According to Jacob's testimony, he was tutoring one student after school, name redacted, and instructed the student to play the popular song, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. The student got through the first two lines of the song quite well, and then her head exploded on the next strum of the ukulele? Her head did what? Wait, wait, wait. That can't be right. East. This is sick. It literally says here that her head exploded. Jacob's exact words were, like a paint-filled balloon? So Jacobs, understandably concerned about how this would look, took the girl's body and buried it in the woods behind the school. But he kept the ukulele. Of course he did. Wouldn't be a scary story if he didn't, would it, Dr. Delbert East, worst pranker of all time? So... He stashed the instrument in a storeroom and left it there for several months. According to him, curiosity began to eat away at him. Had the instrument actually killed the student? Or had the girl been afflicted by some rare, head-exploding disease? The only way to find out was to play it himself. That, or get another student to do it for him. Unethical? Perhaps. But what were the odds of the same thing happening twice? So, Jacob had another student stay after school and play the same songs on the ukulele. Everything seemed to be going fine. The student made it through Jimmy Crack Corn and Hot Cross Buns without so much as a twinge of discomfort crossing their face. Short of the usual discomfort seen on a person's face when they're forced to play hot crust buns on a ukulele after school. Encouraged, Jacobs instructed the student to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Seven seconds later and Jacobs was again coated in... in liquid student head. Jesus! Who wrote these notes? Is East actually capable of making up this kind of... butchery? There's more here. Might as well. Anyway, after hiding the second student's body, their name has also been redacted, Jacobs hid the ukulele away and swore never to touch it again. When later asked why he didn't just destroy the thing, Jacobs claimed that he was afraid that whatever was lurking in the instrument would escape if he damaged it in any way. For over a year, the ukulele lay dormant in the school's storeroom. It likely would have stayed there permanently had another student, Neil Killian, 
not pranked Jacob so harshly. Jacob's was so incensed at the egging of his classroom that he pulled the ukulele out of storage during Killian's detention and instructed him to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. The notes say that, in a later interview, he recalled his revenge on Neil Killian. The boy was your run-of-the-mill teenage anarchist. He had nothing to fear from a high school music teacher like Roderick Jacobs. So instead of suffering a prison-like detention sentence, he took the ukulele and sauntered up to the front of the music room. He plucked the chords with surprising accuracy, said Jacobs. And then the room was covered in eggs and brain matter. The local police finally started sniffing around Jacobs after the third student's disappearance. So he had little choice but to pack up and leave. He took the ukulele with him. When pressed, Jacobs claimed he had no idea why he kept carrying the instrument with him. He only said how much he loved the music it made, especially the lovely melodies it played only for him when they were in private. Just for the record, I am now watching the instrument very closely. After that whole thing with the portrait, I'm not taking any chances on any Spirit Halloween self-playing instruments today. So, Jacobs began traveling the country, earning a living as a substitute music teacher and a private tutor. He'd never stay in one place for too long. Inevitably, one of his students would get their hands on the ukulele, play the wrong song, and lose their head. Literally. This went on for years, apparently. There's stacks and stacks of reprinted police reports and newspaper articles from all over the country. I can't possibly record all of these. I'm just going to skip to the... Here we go. Jacobs was eventually apprehended in 2006, after security cameras caught him entering a private residence for a tutoring session. He exited half an hour later while the student was found later the next day. Sans head, of course. While no evidence has been found to support his claims, Jacobs later claimed responsibility for the disappearances of... 477 students between the ages of 14 and 18. 477? That's astronomical! This, if confirmed, would make Roderick Jacobs the most prolific serial killer of all time. There is no way this is real. Of course, there's no evidence at all. Mysteriously, the bodies of those vanished could not be located in the places Jacobs claimed to have disposed of them. Jacobs himself did not seem surprised by this in the least. Jacobs was ultimately found not guilty by reason of insanity or mental defect and placed in a state hospital in Pennsylvania. His case drew the attention of the Lazarus Foundation, who, in 2007, managed to acquire the ukulele and interviewed Jacobs extensively. Jacobs agreed to tell his whole story, and all he asked was one thing. He asked to be allowed to play the ukulele on film, a film which is attached to this report. Oh, definitely not watching that. Jacob's volatile end seems to confirm the majority of his story. Foundation staff and researchers are instructed not to play the ukulele at any time or under any circumstances, especially not the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. No connection with any open case file can be ascertained at this time. The ukulele is hereby classified as extremely dangerous source unknown. 
I have to give it to you. This is beyond ridiculous. This can't be actually a thing. But then... This seems to be a lot of effort just for a prank. You know what? My horoscope did say to analyze my life a little bit more closely this week. I haven't played one of these since I was a kid. Let's see. Isabella Thalo, unlock this door before I change your future! Sorry about that, Doctor. I just finished recording. Here's the recorder. It's still on. Miss Thalo, please take the rest of the day off before you find some other way to get liquid student head all over the archives. I'll take the artifact, thank you. Ah! 